Hi, I'm Winston Gow, an inventor and researcher in the field of agriculture, water, and nutrition. And today we're going to talk about organic agriculture. Now, organic agriculture, unfortunately, most people think that they can apply the good old 17, 18, 19th century organic farming technology. And of course, you may have noticed some of these fruits and vegetables that are produced by this technology has bugs, they're small, they're actually not very nice. Uh, there's a good reason for that. You see, this is the 21st century. It isn't the 17th or 18th or 19th century. This planet has an ice age, and there's a function behind the ice age. Now, ice age lays 10 to 12 feet of rock powder down, and for the next 10,000 years, we basically have beautiful topsoil to work with. Well, we're at the end of that 10,000 years, and so we've lost 80% of the topsoil. That means we lost 80% of the, the um, rock powders, uh, probably good solid 80% of the soil-based microorganisms. Those are the guys who break down the fertility. So you have rock powders, you have soil-based microorganisms, you have the various different organic matters, right? The, the dead animals, the trees, the grasses, these things that compost down. All of these things form what's necessary to create good fertile soil. And so at this particular juncture, uh, we not just have come to the end of the Ice Age, but we also have been applying at least 50 to 80 years worth of petrochemical fertilizers on the soil. But the petrochemical fertilizers, pesticides, herbicides, all these heavy-duty chemicals have then combined, locked up the soil, locked up what leftover trace minerals are in the soil, and the farmers call that hard pan. So with hard pan, you're not able to get to the minerals. So as an organic farmer, or any farmer for that case, it's time that you recognize that you have to replace all of those things that are now missing, rock powders or minerals in some form. Uh, the organic matter, this is always greatly missed, and of course water. Now, the, one of the primary reasons why we have crop failure is lack of water. And the, one of the subjects that the farmers pay least attention, this is irregardless of uh, petrochemical fertilization, or petrochemical farmers, or organic farmers, they always don't put enough water, and more importantly, none of them correct the structure of water. You see, man has throwing, throwing atomic bombs around. Atomic bombs wreck the frequency, and the frequencies wreck the structure of the water. So now, farmers go water their plants, and they get fungus. Fungus every place. So they're, instead of watering the plants at the correct time, which is in the middle of the night, they're watering it in the daytime. Well, if you water in the daytime, 85% of it is going to go into evaporation. So the right answer is to correct the water structure and water in the nighttime so you don't have the evaporation and the loss of water. So with what I teach, which is the family survival farm, which utilizes go beyond organic methodologies, the first things we address is changing the water structure so that you no longer have to deal with the issue of fungus and mildew issues that will definitely hit your crops and attack you. That's number one. And the number two things, of course, is soil-based microorganisms. With the soil-based microorganisms, the correct water structure, those two alone will change a lot of things. They'll break up the soil, do a lot of different things. And you will start to be walking onto the path of good fertility. Those are your step ones, okay? In Family Survival Farm, we're actually teaching the farmers to start out with number one, grow your own soil, not be like other farmers to strip mine the soil. You're growing your soil. Then you grow your crops, then you have your animals, then you have an ecosystem so that the chickens, the cattle, each do their thing the way Mother Nature intended to them so that you have an ecosystem occurring on the farmland, which means no piles of manure, no odor, no disease, right? If you're working with Mother Nature, that's what will happen. And if you work against Mother Nature, you then end up with these giant lagoons of fecal matter, which then pollutes the groundwater, etc., etc. So there is a, it's a different way of thinking in which you have to approach farming. So stay tuned for the next time. I'll bring back many more information on 
how to go beyond organic. Thank you for listening.